This week, we saw the launch of a new competitive platform, another, another hat sort of thrown into the mix here. And the headline on this article, there, there was you know, a number of articles about this new site, kick.com. But this one I thought encapsulated a lot of it. It says, top Twitch creator endorses platform connected to crypto gambling site. So this is Trainwreck, huge streamer, Canadian actually. Um, and, or lives in Canada. I think he's American originally, but Oh lives my in Canada. God, of course you had to throw it in. <laughs> so he, he can gamble. He lives there too, so he can gamble legally, actually. Um, <laughs> and, uh, he, uh, had made headlines recently because he had generated $360 million from his partnership with stake.com, which was an online gambling site. So he had generated 300, like the site had paid him. $360 million over the last however many years for him to gamble on his stream. Now, Twitch shut down basically gambling for the most part. And in response, now Trainrex is launching his own Twitch competitor called kick.com. And um, the announcement was all about sort of power to the creators. So on kick.com, creators keep 95% of the revenue and the company only keeps 5% compared to the 50-50 split on Twitch. Um, they also said uh, that, you know, they would they would do all kinds of sort of creator-friendly things. There was a long list of creator-friendly initiatives that they would be doing. Um, and kick.com, you know, with Trainwrecks basically launched and and garnered some interest. But only today did it come out that the backers behind kick.com was actually stake was the uh, the online gambling company that had paid train wrecks so much money to gamble on twitch over the last year so it's a ga online gaming company like gambling company casino online casino company backing kick.com and obviously gambling is allowed on the site um you know there's the hot tub streams there's the just chatting streams also there's a lot of stuff uh, they promise more transparency in terms of what's allowed, what's not allowed, because Twitch has sort of struggled with that. So they're trying to be different. And I'm curious if you guys think this has a chance of success. What do you think of the different revenue split? What do you think of the, the backers or investor here? Um, just your overall thoughts. So sorry, the gambling, just so I clarify, the gambling site owns the live streaming Platform, yes, they're the back, right. they're the financial backers. Got it. And real quick, guys, I, I do want to jump in with a cool stat here because for those of you that follow traditional sports, Aaron Judge agreed to a nine-year deal with the Yankees, right, Jeff? Three hundred sixty million comes out to about one hundred ten thousand a day. I think was uh, what was the math breakdown on that. So the fact that Trainwreck saw that from Stake.com and gaming, just another fun stat to show your friends, your family, uh, in, in comparison. Um, you, you know, to me here, I think there's plenty of what well, we, we had stream hatchet on the live show, I think two or three weeks ago, right before Thanksgiving, we broke down the Q3 viewership and, you know, Twitch's dominance, what it was two years ago, it, it's showing that there are room for other players, which I didn't believe to be the case, you know, while Mixer shut down and they didn't find success, I think that was more a reflection of their approach. So one, when you have a niche like gambling that this platform kick.com is enabling, that's a huge point of or that's a huge value that's a huge reason to attract creators in an audience so i do like that they have a specific niche and that they obviously have stake.com backing why it's not just an extension on stake.com i'm not sure maybe there's legalities there maybe they're dipping their toe in the water my question here my concern is this 95 percent to the creators model because how is that sustainable we you know we just saw twitch and youtube raise their uh, or change the relationship that they have with their creators, paying them out less, claiming that their costs, that they're not making money on the platform, that their costs are increasing. And this is such a drastic step in the opposite direction. It has to be, I don't know what you guys think. This has to be just a, a, a gimmick or something to attract creators for the first year or two while they're building. And then we'll also see that go from 95 to 75 to, to lower. If it, it makes sense once it comes out that they're owned by the gambling site, because they're not they're not viewing this as the money maker, right? This is marketing, right? So they, I assume you know it makes sense in the sense of you think about it that way, and really the people who they're trying to attract are the gamblers that are going to then watch you know the streamers who aren't you don't they don't care about monetizing them their eyeballs, they care about monetizing them when they go to the gambling site. 
uh, which actually makes a lot of sense. And Jimmy, I think you made the great point about the, you know, Twitch. I, I don't think they're beatable at this point from another like mass market broad website that's trying to cater to everyone because I think the network effects are too strong. But when you go down to these niches, particularly ones that Twitch won't allow, I think they can definitely win. Um, and I actually think it's I think it's a good way to a good way to go about competing with Twitch. Yeah, I mean the <laughs> Christian Christian makes an interesting point. Wow, this new tw Twitch front page is interesting. Oh wait, <laughs> I mean it, it does look very much like Twitch's front page, um, very very much. I thought it was interesting. I just look put it up right now. Right, Trainrex has sixteen point four k viewers roughly. And the top category is slots with 18.5K. So he's still the majority of the audience on the website right now. Um, but I, I'm on the, I was on the fence on this originally. And then when I found out stake.com was the owner, right? The online casino was the owner. I've, I've slowly migrated towards thinking this may be kind of genius, right? Because if you look at who was gambling on Twitch, a lot of the big streamers were gambling on Twitch. A lot of them were making lots of money gambling on Twitch. Trainwrecks, XQC, Karina Kopp. Like there, there are some very big names. Just between XQC and Trainwrecks, you have two of the biggest streamers in the world. If they can lure XQC away to kick.com with a huge payday, right? And basically the money they were paying him on Twitch anyways, why not have a platform of your own? Um, seems like an interesting play, right? Like, Seems like maybe it could work. Maybe this is the the way to sort of not end up like Mixer um, because it's money they were going to spend anyways, right? It's money they were going to spend on streamers anyways. I'm just curious to to get your like clear cut vote, guys. A year from now, is this Mixer or is this a legitimate alternative to Twitch, or is it something else? It's it's probably neither, but it's not, I don't think it'll be mixer. Cause I, I don't think they'll, they'll fail so long as they're getting the eyeballs that are tra you know, that are translating to the gambling site. So short of regulation, I mean, there, there's probably a lot of things that they're doing that maybe aren't kosher in different States or different areas that, you know, that that's who knows. Um, but short of getting shut down for that, I think this will be around now. It won't hit, it, it won't be anything towards making a dent on Twitch. But I think it can sur surpass Twitch in this niche, which is all they want. You know, if gambling was 0.5% of Twitch, they can take 60, 70% market share in that vertical, especially because Twitch has, you know, gotten rid of that vertical. But I think, it, yeah, I think it could be successful. Lindsay? That was, yeah, that was precisely the analysis I was going to give is that gambling market is a little bit opaque to me just because I'm not in it, but I do know that the people who are in, in it and into it are very in it and into it. And that population obviously is in need of this service considering uh, Twitch has all but banned gambling. So, and, and from a regulation perspective, I actually think it makes it almost easier to have everything in, in one place um, rather than unclear rules on several different platforms. Um, so I think that it, it may be preferable from that standpoint as well. So I think like Jeff said, I don't think this is a mixer. I don't think it's it's necessarily a high value competitor to Twitch, but I think it serves this market very well and, and continues to survive after a year. Yeah, uh, let me, I just want to extend the thought one, one bit uh, before we move on. Ironically, I think this is what, what like an esports entertainment group should have done, right? Put content and gambling together, this seems like this could work, right? And and I would argue even the the other esports betting players today should be looking at this, going, "Hey, maybe we should do this, right? Maybe we should have our own platform um, where we do this." And so, uh, you know, I, I, I'd be curious to see how many take note here, because um, I don't think with the weight of someone like train wrecks this goes away tomorrow um and the weight of a stake.com who has you know virtually you know pockets so deep that they could probably keep this going for the next however many years so it'll be interesting to see how many other categories though grow beyond the slots category 
Because if that's the only category, eh, it it will exist, but it'll be a niche player, right? Like people will go there to watch slots, which it's its own thing. I used to watch a lot of train wrecks. It's fun watching someone lose millions of dollars uh, and then win millions of dollars and then lose millions of dollars. <laughs> there was something entertaining in that. Um, so that's an interesting niche in and of itself. But I think I think they, if they're smart, they can branch out to other areas. And look, frankly, maybe we should stream uh, this this live stream on Kick.com. Also, we'll have to we'll have to look into that. So stay tuned. Um, Matt says, in a year, Twitch will still be top dog, undoubtedly. I mean, a year is not that long, Matt. So I think I think I probably agree. But the better question is like, what happens in five years or ten years? 